some said she should never have been built, but even they could hardly fail to respect the achievement that's to be realized today. All that remains if this first flight is successful is to prove that supersonics can operate economically on the air routes of the world. Already the maiden flight has been postponed for over a year, now is added the frustration of indifferent weather. But it's worth waiting if Concorde fulfills her promise. Designed to cut the flight to New York to less than three and a half hours, she could earn for Britain and France some 2,000 million pounds each. Brian Trubshaw, BAC's chief test pilot, keeping crossed fingers for his French counterpart, André Touca. At Monsieur Touca's fingertips, 110 tons of supersonic superlatives, and at last, it's okay for takeoff. Take her away, Touca, she's all yours. Toward the skies, the white bird of tomorrow. When tomorrow comes, and that's at least four years ahead, Concord will go into service. And that could be as much as seven years before the Americans get a supersonic airliner off the ground. That's why Concord means so much to the French at Toulouse and the British at Bristol. And it's only a matter of five to six weeks before Concord 002 makes her first flight from Filton. Between them, these two aircraft represent an investment of some 500 million pounds. But no other venture in aviation has ever promised such rewards. Much remains to be learned, but one thing we do know, and no one put it better than Andre Turka himself, my big bird flies. It flies pretty well. <laughs> 